Modern computers are really good at giving you graphical feedback and auditory feedback, but they're really not good at stimulating your sense of touch. So say you're buying a new pair of pants and you want to figure out, do I want this pair of corduroys or this pair? And what if you could, on your computer screen, just touch the two little fabric samples and get a real nice sense of what they're going to be like um, before you buy them and get them and realize that they weren't exactly what you wanted. I'm Katherine Kuchenbecker. I'm the Skirkanich Assistant Professor of Innovation in Mechanical Engineering and Applied Mechanics at the University of Pennsylvania. A big project in my lab is our haptography project, haptic photography, touch photography, where we're working on being able to capture how an object feels super realistically and then be able to recreate it for you later to enrich virtual interactions so that you could feel the t a texture on the screen of your computer or um, re-experience the sensations of touching an object um, just through your computer and through devices that we create. Basically, this is a tooth with a cavity on the top of it. And if I uh, play the video, you should be able to feel right now the stick. That's a uh, stick right into a cavity there. Uh -huh. That's another cavity Ooh. right there that you should be able to feel the pop. I'm able to feel what he's feeling. So he could be teaching me something about this tooth. Our research on haptography is strongly motivated by medical simulation and training. So right now, the way that doctors and dentists, new, say, medical students, learn to do a certain task, like a surgery or drilling a cavity in a tooth, is by reading about it in books and learning about it in lecture. And they don't know what it's actually going to feel like or be like until they are working on an actual patient. We're working on technology that would enable better training for someone before they actually treat a patient. We want to let them feel what this interaction is going to feel like, whether it's a surgical interaction or interacting with a tooth or practicing some other physical skill with a psychomotor skill with their hand, I want to let them be able to practice that in a safe uh, but rich and challenging environment so they can learn those skills before they go work on a real patient. Now that's not the only use that we envision. This work has strong connections to one of the challenges that the National Academy of Engineering laid out as the main challenges we should be addressing in the next century, and that is enriching virtual reality. Say when you're sitting down with a device like an iPad and you're moving a, a stylus across the screen, I want you not just to be able to see the icons or the pictures, I want you to be able to feel them through that tool as well. And you could turn an interface like that towards medical simulation, but it could also just be for more creative or expressive uh, applications like drawing or computer-aided design or maybe even online shopping. I submitted a proposal to the NSF uh, and it was rated highly, but it wasn't initially funded and it was only because of ARA that I was able to get this grant and that had such a huge impact on me and my group and my students. I've been able to hire many undergraduates and master's students, give them a great research experience. They've been contributing on many, many levels from the fundamental technology to the application to dentistry to the epidural anesthesiology application and so it's really empowering to help really bright and motivated young people assemble all their different skills together to really push forward um, engineering science uh, and that's that's really satisfying. 